In this video, we're going to look at special factoring, differences of cubes, and sum, sums of cubes. Differences, oops, sorry, differences. OK, great. Before we get started on this, now, we are probably all much more competent with our perfect squares than we are with our perfect cubes. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of some of the perfect cubes that we might encounter in this video or in uh, any uh, any question you might see with a difference of cubes. It's important to be able to, to spot them and recognize them. OK, so over here, I'm just going to create my, actually, I'm going to do it over here because I think there's more space over here. So we're going to say 1 cubed is 1. So this column, the, the right-hand column, will be my perfect cubes. 2 cubed, that's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. 5 cubed is 125. 6 cubed is 216, 7 cubed, 7 cubed is 343, and hopefully that's as big as we need to get here. Uh, we can add to it if we need to. You can always just plug in your calculator too. Okay, so differences in sums of cubes, while they're easy to spot, they're a little bit tricky to factor, and unfortunately the best thing that you can do for yourself is just memorize these formulas. So a difference of cubes is exactly what it sounds like. It's a perfect cube subtracted by another perfect cube. So it's nice to, to see the, the simplified version. The factor it is a little bit trickier. So when we factor a difference of cubes, it's going to factor into root minus root. Remembering this is the cubed root, not the square root. Root minus root. And then the other factor is going to be root squared plus the product of the two roots plus the second root squared. So this would be a good thing if you have flashcards or however you want to, however you plan to memorize things. You want to commit this to memory because it is pretty awkward. Generally speaking, this should not be factorable. In very rare cases, is it factorable? Doesn't hurt to check, but generally it should not be factorable. Okay, how to recognize the sum of cubes? Again, not that bad to, to see. It's just going to be cube plus cube. And unlike a difference of squares where there was no sum of squares, there is a sum of cubes. And what it factors into? It factors into root plus root. That's cubed root plus cubed root times root squared minus the product of the two roots plus the second root squared. And as always, if you want to confirm, you can always distribute here and confirm that you do get back to x cubed plus y cubed. So these are the two formulas we want to know and love and cherish when we're talking about factoring things that are cubes. All right, so for letter A, our first example, we have y cubed minus 8. y cubed is a perfect cube, and its cubed root is y. 8 is a perfect cube, in case you're not sure. Again, we can refer back to the board over there. Its root is 2. This is a difference, so we're going to use the difference formula. It will be root minus root times root squared plus the product of the two roots plus root squared. 2 squared is 4. We want to simplify if we can, so we wouldn't write 2 squared there. We would say 2 squared is 4. You can double check, but y, two, y squared plus 2y plus 4 is not factorable. Target product would be 4. Target sum is 2y. The only combinations that multiply to 4 are 4 and 1, which don't add up to 2, and 2 and 2, which also don't add up to 2. So this would be the final factoring for letter A. Letter B, b cubed is a perfect cube, and its root is b. 1 over 8 is a perfect cube because 1 has a root of 1 and 8 has a root of 2. So this would be the cubed root of b cubed. This is the root of 1 8. Um, this is a sum, so we want to apply the uh, sum of cubes formula. That would be root plus root times the first root squared minus the product of the two roots plus the second root squared. 1 half squared, that's 1 half times 1 half, is 1 fourth. Uh, you can, again, you can check this, although you don't really have to worry about seeing if it's factorable since it's not integers anyway. This would be our final factoring for letter B. Letter C, I don't know why I tried to close a parenthesis here when there was none to start with. 27 is a perfect cube. Its root is 3. A cubed is a perfect cube. Its root is A. So this one would factor into, this is subtraction, so it's going to be 3 minus A times 3 squared is 9 plus the product of the two, 3A, plus the square of the second close parentheses. This is not factorable. 9 has 9 and 1 and 3 and 3, neither of which add up to 3. So this would be the final factoring of 27 minus a cubed. In letter D, we have s cubed plus 1. 
S cubed is a perfect cube. It's, uh, cube, its root is S. One is a perfect cube. Its root is one. This is addition, so we want to refer to the addition formula. That would be S plus one times S squared minus one times S, which is S, plus one squared, which is one. And one, the only way you can get to one is one times one, which does not add up to negative one, so that would be our final factoring for letter D. Two more. They're kind of squished in over here. 20, uh, letter E is 27x cubed minus 1 over 216. So 27x cubed has a perfect cubed root of 3x. 1 over 216, so 1, the perfect cube uh, root, is 1. And 216 is 6. So these are both perfect cubes. And it's subtraction, so this is a difference of cubes. It's going to be root minus root times root squared, so be careful here, 3x squared, we're squaring both parts, is 9x squared. So you have to square the entire first piece, don't leave out the 3. It's not 3x squared, it's 9x squared. This was subtraction, so this is plus, uh-oh. When we multiply these, 3x times 1 6, 3 times 1 6 is a half. So that would be 1 half x plus 1 6 squared is 1 over 36. And that would be the final factoring for letter F, uh, letter E, excuse me. Letter F, we have 10R cubed, it's in the corner here, 10R cubed plus 1,250. Wait a minute, 10 is not a perfect cube, but we always need to check, is there a GCF? Yeah, 10 and 1,250 are both divisible by 10. So the first thing we want to do here is factor out the 10. That would give me 10 times r cubed plus 125. Now within the parentheses, r cubed is a perfect cube. Its root is r. 125 is a perfect cube. Its root is 5. And this is addition, so this would be the sum of cubes. We're going to bring down the 10, but otherwise it's not going to be have any other part of the factoring. Uh, let's see. So we have r plus 5. You need to be careful here. My fives are looking like S's the lower I get on the board. Then this would be R squared minus 5R plus 5 squared, which is 25. And this would be the final factoring. Don't forget that 10 for letter F.